Greetings, everyone. Teching101 here with the news at whatever hour it is right now in whatever time zone you're living in right now. I don't mean to brag, but I think I have the most efficient news. Today's top story. Could Kaido, one of the four emperors, actually be the golden prophecy child known as Joy Boy this whole time? Stay tuned to find out. But first, let's go to our weather correspondent, Barry D. Brick. Barry, how's it looking out there? Oh my god. We're all doomed. Well, it's been fun, ladies and gentlemen, to serve as your faithful anchorman for the last minute or so. I'll cherish this time for the rest of my life. Signing out. Okay, hey everybody, how you doing? Teching and Barry back again, and uh, this topic is something I feel like I'm a little bit late to the party on. I feel like people kind of arrived at this conclusion like a couple of weeks ago, like when the last few chapters came out, but whatever, we're talking about it today, alright? And the general premise with this theory goes something like this. OMG! Kaido originally wanted to be Joy Boy, and that's why he was so, like, you know, intense in his younger days, where he was like, I'm gonna go out there to the sea, and I'm gonna conquer the world, World, and he recruited King, and he's like, I'm gonna, you know, change the world. I'm the only one that can change the world. And then we see how he is right now, where he certainly does not lack ambition. I mean, you bench press an entire island in order to make it the new capital of Wano, which will become your new pirate paradise. You gotta have some ambition there. I'm just saying he doesn't seem to have as much ambition as he did in his younger days, like we see in the flashback with King. So something must have happened along the way where he realized that he was never going to change the world in the way that he wanted to be, or he wanted to be Joy Boy, and that just wasn't going to happen. So instead, what Kaido is basically doing doing right now is he's acting as gatekeeper. He's basically like, you know, I am Kaido, one of the emperors, and if I can't be Joy Boy, then the person that's going to be Joy Boy or is going to get the title of Joy Boy has to get through my Kanabo first. You know, that's the basic impression, and that person right now happens to be Luffy. Uh, in fact, Kaido is getting very, very excited right now because he straight up defeated Luffy on two separate occasions before this, but Luffy keeps coming back. A trait that if Luffy were to have the title of Joy Boy or be dealing with some kind of reincarnation thing right now involving Joy Boy, um, that certainly seems like something that Joy Boy would do, like keep coming back no matter how many times he's seemingly killed, all right? And so Kaido right now in the battle is getting very excited and having Having probably the most fun he's ever had in his life. But I can imagine there were other people in Kaido's past, like Odin is probably the most obvious, where maybe Kaido was thinking, okay, maybe Odin is going to become the next Joy Boy, but then Kaido killed him. And then, you know, throughout the last 20 years of him being based in Wano, maybe he encountered some other people along the way. Um, he didn't stay in Wano all the time for 20 plus years. He would go traveling every once in a while. Like, when Ace met Yamato on Onigashima, when Ace was on his journey, um, Yamato mentioned oh, my father is not here right now, like he left, okay? So maybe every once in a while he would encounter someone that might hold the title of Joy Boy, but then he would beat them down or just straight up kill them and be like, well, I guess if you were killed by me, you couldn't be Joy Boy, that kind of stuff. So that um, that's the basic premise. However, that creates a few questions. One of the most notable questions is, all right, how did Kaido even learn about the story of Joy Boy, okay? Now, up until now, I was just saying like, well, he probably learned about it on Rox's crew, right? Because Rox, uh, Rox D. Zebek was this really powerful pirate. He wanted to be king of the world. Uh, he might have very well known about Joy Boy and the Will of D and the Void Century and all that stuff and explained it to Kaido. But let's try to look at it from a different angle here. So this morning... Um, I follow a Twitter user by the name of Sandman AP, and I would recommend that everybody out there that enjoys One Piece news check out that uh, uh, Twitter user as well. Twitter user, I guess that that person as well, um, because uh, what Sandman AP does is translate stuff like interviews and things from Japanese into English. So anytime that Oda does like a television interview or an interview with a magazine, or even if there's just a little blurb in Shonen Jump that's not really translated in the official viz, uh, Sandman AP will provide a translation of that. And so this 
morning he put out a tweet that was basically talking about what the name Kaido really means because the situation in the manga is that Kaido's name is always written in katakana with no kanji. Uh, that's something you actually have to watch out for a lot in One Piece because Oda will sometimes reveal the name of a character, but he'll write it in katakana. And if you ever notice that whenever a character is introduced, we have like the dialogue box, you know, th this is Kaido, right? We get more than one of those. And I think the reason for that is sometimes Oda will start to introduce a character with just the katakana, but then later on in the story, he'll reveal the kanji that makes up that character's name. And that's a big deal because kanji mean words. And so if you get the idea of what a, a person's name is written in kanji, that gives you a basic idea of maybe something that Oda is going to do with that character, like a hint or something. So for right now, I think Oda always writes Kaido's name in katakana. But if it were to be written in kanji, there's a few ways it could be done. And Sandman AP put out a tweet that basically said it could be uh, Joy Boy itself or just Strong Kid. This could also tie back to the legend of Kintaro. Kintaro literally translating to gold. Golden Child. Okay, Kintaro is a folk tale from the Heian period of Japan, which takes place right after the Yamato period, in case you're curious with a connection there. Actually, not right after the Yamato period. It goes Yamato period and then the Nara period, which lasted like less than a century, and then the Heian period, which is where the folk tale of Kintaro emerged. And the story of Kintaro is that he was just this really strong child that lived out in the mountains. He was raised by like a mountain witch kind of character, um, you know, and he got really powerful and that was basically the idea of Kintaro. So there's definitely some similarities there to Kaido, which got me thinking, like, considering there's so much folktale and, like, there's yokai and stuff and references in Wano. And also, you can't forget the legend of Momotaro as well, which, you know, we have Momo and also Otama with the ability of the Kibidango. So there's a lot of references to this kind of stuff in, in Wano, like the folktales of Japan. So the idea that that was maybe Kaido's backstory, like, before he joined the Roxas crew, like, when Kaido was a child, he was basically a wild kid that was raised out out in the, the mountains somewhere and some old witch was like the one that was like his guardian and maybe this old witch is somebody that explained the history of um, uh, the void century and Joy Boy like somehow this old woman like knew about it living out in the mountains somewhere maybe she was a mystic maybe she had like some kind of divination abilities like Madame Charlie does that's one thing you gotta understand about One Piece like okay you're gonna introduce a character like Madame Charlie who has straight up divination abilities like she can straight up predict the future like it's not even even like, look, oh, well, she's like half right. Is like, no, the, the futures she predicts are usually dead set on happening. So if she could do that, you also have to assume there might be some other characters out there that have other kinds of clairvoyance or divination abilities that have nothing to do with devil fruits, might have something to do with hockey. But the idea that like, okay, Kaido was raised out in the wilds by some old woman and she was like, ah, you will become the next joy boy. <laughs> You know, like some kind of character like that? Sure, I buy that for Kaido's backstory. Why not? Also, some similarities to Goku there, being raised out in the mountains by an old person, you know, except he gets really, you know, really strong, you know, something like that. Okay, maybe. Um, so, l let's assume that. I guess it doesn't really matter so much, um, like, when Kaido was told this legend. He could have been told it when he was a child. He could have been told about it when he was a teenager on Rox's crew. Just remember that Kaido was 21 years old when uh, God Valley happened happened and Rox was apparently killed and all of the other members of the crew scattered to join and create their own pirate crews and Kaido at that point was I guess maybe tried to go out on his own but failed because like his strength his raw power was not enough to conquer the world so he was captured by the world government thrown into punk hazard and then that's where he met King and after they broke out of that place he decided you know I will do it I will become Joy Boy I will make the world now he doesn't directly say it himself Kaido he doesn't directly say like, I will become the next Joy Boy, or anything like that. It's more of like, I will change the world, or I will make the world the way I want it to be. Like, I'm the only one that can do that. And then later, last chapter, chapter 1036, when we got the other flashback of King uh, and Kaido a few years after they first met at Punk Hazard, um, basically, King was like, you know, oh, I think you can do it, Kaido-sama. I think you can change the world. And Kaido's like, whoa, 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 you really think I would be the next Joy Boy? Actually, he might have learned about the Joy Boy legend from King. King being a Lunarian would probably definitely 
personally know about it, but I guess, like I said, it doesn't really matter exactly when in his life he first heard the legend. Um, the idea is that when he did hear the legend, he thought like, oh, this legend is about me. I'm going to be the one to do it, okay? And then some stuff happened, and then now all of a sudden, even if you go back as far as like when Kaido was um, uh, fighting Odin, right? Kaido had a very different kind of personality back then. Like I said, he was a lot more ambitious. He seemed to enjoy life a little bit more. Uh, when you see him fighting against Moria, he was like smirking, like, oh, this is great. When he was fighting against Odin, he was having a little bit of fun there, right? Even up until Odin's execution, right? Um, ever since then, though, something happened in the last 20 years where not only, it, it might not have just been the fact that Kaido killed Odin, it might have been something else altogether where Kaido really realized that the prophecy was not about him or no matter how hard he tried he could not become the next joy boy something happened where he came to that revelation and now is deeply deeply depressed by it that could probably most likely be the reason why he's a drunk right now okay now he still has a job to do and i guess he decided like well okay if i can't be the next joy boy if i'm not the one it's supposed to be in this prophecy then i still have a role to play in the prophecy itself right it might have been a situation where like for most of kaido's life he kind of set his sights on doing this thing and he failed or he realized he could never succeed so he's like okay well, I can't just completely discard it because that was, like, the point of my whole life up until now. I can't just get rid of it. Like, it's like, what else am I going to do if I'm not some super strong pirate trying to take over the world? Like, go run a bakery? I mean, how can I do that? You know, I don't know the first thing about molding dough. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so Kaido's like, all right, if I can't be the next Joy Boy, then I'm going to gatekeep the next Joy Boy. I'm going to be the one that's going to determine, like, all right, all right, if this Joy Boy reincarnation wants to show up or whoever bears the title of it that has these traits um, to, like, usher in the next era of the world and possibly find the One Piece and all that jazz, you know, if somebody like that shows up, you know, they got to go through me. And if they can't go through me, then I guess they're not worthy of the title, right? Right. It could also be something a lot more petty with it. It could just be like, well, all right, if I can't be the next Joy Boy, then I'm going to kill anyone that shows up that might be. So then nobody will be Joy Boy. Could be something petty like that. Not really sure. Um, all right. So what could have happened, though, in Kaido's past, assuming it was not um, Odin's death? that changed his mind on this. Well, let's go back and look at Roger, because Roger, I like to think that Joy Boy, yeah, they're not necessarily reincarnations in terms of, like, you know, actually, like, oh, you, you have the spirit of Joy Boy in you, like his literal spirit. I think it's a title, and it's the title that is passed down to worthy members of the Will of D throughout history. You, you might say at this point, well, Kaido doesn't have the Will of D, so there you go. Well... There is a D in his name. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying something. You know what I mean? It, it could literally be Kai D O. And uh, O is literally a word in Japanese. It's just the kanji for king. So, and Kai, what does Kai mean again? Kai can mean a few things. Hold on. Okay, so as I said, Kai has a number of meanings depending on the kanji used. It could mean shell, it can mean open, it can mean restoration and recovery. However, one of the things here that's very fascinating, it can also be read as ocean with this kanji. Um, as like, I think this is also the kanji for like mother sea, mother ocean or something like that. Um, okay, so if that's the case... We could literally, and I once again, I'm not a Japanese expert, so this might not fit properly, but couldn't we just have Kai with the kanji for ocean, D, as in the will of D, O, as in king. So literally just ocean D king. Ocean King. I mean, that's a very fitting name for Kaido. Once again, I might be completely off the mark here, because I don't know 100% how this all works with the naming schemes. Uh, it might not fit into the naming scheme Oda has planned, but I don't know. It's an idea, man. I'm just throwing it out there. Also, even if the D in Kaido's name isn't relevant, it could be a situation with Shanks, where we only know Shanks' is one name. He, we don't know his last name, or if Shanks is just a nickname. Like, we don't know that, okay? Kaido might have a completely other name, and the Will of D might be in there. Also, you can't forget the idea that, like, characters 
characters like Odin, for example, clearly exhibited the trait of the will of D, even though he didn't actually have the D initial. It might be because the naming schemes of Wano Kuni are different from the naming schemes in the rest of the world, so like middle name initials don't really exist in Wano, but even so, regardless if he had the actual initial in his name as it was written, Odin was still very much a carrier of the Will of D. I don't think anybody would really doubt that. The way he lived his life, his vying for freedom above all, his death with his a smile on his face, I mean, which is indicative right there of a member of the Will of D. So, yeah, I'm going to say that. Odin had the Will of D, even though he didn't have the initial. Kaido might have the initial, uh, but maybe he has it as well. And, you know, he was just like, oh, well, I'm just not the one. Like, there's a lot of members of the Will of D, of the Clan of D, but they're not all going to be Joy Boy, but they all have the potential potential to be. So the idea, though, is let's say Roger, during his time period, was the bearer of the title of Joy Boy, like he did achieve it. However, remember when Roger got to Laugh Tale, he learned something. He learned that he was too early, okay? And it also probably had something to do with the mermaid princess who was not born at that point yet, okay? So the idea is, like, maybe they arrived at Laugh Tale, and I've talked about this before, but they arrive at Laugh Tale, and perhaps the thing they were all looking at, that they were laughing about, um, wasn't necessarily a pun glyph or anything. I mean, I guess it could have been and Odin could have translated the story and then everybody laughed at the story. But just the reaction that Roger had and all of the Roger crew was like laughing at once, it seemed like to me maybe it was some kind of mural, some kind of painting on a wall. Like, perhaps they arrived at Laugh Tale, they go into the island, some giant temple or something, some kind of structure, and there's a giant mural on the wall that basically tells the story of the first Joy Boy and of the Will of D. And maybe it's like you could just follow along with the pictures and that's what made Roger and his crew laugh. Maybe it was the fact that Joy Boy might have bared a striking similarity to Roger, who also, Roger, remember, in his younger years, bared a striking resemblance to Luffy. Maybe it could have been that Roger saw Joy Boy wearing the straw hat, which used to be his straw hat, so he laughed at that. Or it's just, like, the fact, like, the story happened, and it was just a funny, kind of ironic twist ending, and everyone's like, ah, oh, that was so funny, Joy Boy, something like that. But Roger realized at that point, okay, we arrived too early, or something, like, that. you have to be at the right place place at the right time and if you miss it you miss it and whatever there's nothing you can do about it okay and so Roger kind of accepted that fate that's why he went to the South Blue to meet up with Rouge to have a son so perhaps his son could you know you know be the one that actually fulfills the title of Joy Boy you know what I just realized? Oda could also spin it in a way that's like, everybody that has the Will of D was Joy Boy. Everybody was truly a reincarnation of Joy Boy in some way, in some shape or form, in order to mold the world into the next generation. It wasn't just one person. It was everyone working together. Even Blackbeard, who was doing some really evil, nefarious stuff, if it wasn't for Blackbeard being the impetus to this whole thing, the prophecy would have never been fulfilled. Some bullshit like like that. I don't know, right? Um, so perhaps, though, at some point, I mean, Kaido does have access to a poneglyph. Um, we don't know if he hasn't been able to read it or not. Like, they have the um, information that the Kozuki clan gathered in the palace. Like, Orochi was, you know, the one that had access to that stuff. So even if they didn't have a member of the Kozukis that could read the poneglyphs, or even if they didn't have a member of the Third Eye tribe or something, there might be something written in the history books of the Kozuki clan to translate the poneglyphs. So maybe Kaido did find out what the poneglyphs say or something, and, you know, he learned about the history that way or learned enough about it to realize that, like, I'm not the one, right? Um, you know, I wasn't there on time or I missed my moment. Another way to look at it is, okay, you ever play a video game kind of like, uh, like Persona, like an RPG that has, like, a progression of timeline events and stuff and story events? If you've ever played a game like that, a lot of times they'll have certain events that that can only be, you know, triggered during a certain time. And if you miss the timing of that, or if you don't go to the, like, you have to go to this character and speak to them on this day at this time, or else the event will never happen in the game, and you miss it, you're like, ah, oh, crap, can I go back? No, you can't. I was like, no, I missed the event! You mean I have to go all the way back and start over if I want to get that event again? Yup. So it might have been a situation like that, where, I don't know, Kaido was reading the Poneglyphs, or he had somebody read the Poneglyphs, or he found out in some other way, where he's like, all right, 
I'm gonna be the next Joy Boy. Now, what's this say here? Hmm, let's see. The one that's supposed to be Joy Boy will arrive on this island at this, uh, on the, maybe it actually gives the year of how old they are. Ooh, that's something else, too. Maybe not an exact date, but, like, the age that Joy Boy is supposed to be when they arrive at Laugh Tale or something. So, in the case with Luffy, let's say it would be age 19. Like, in the 19th year of their life, they arrived at the fabled last island, you know, maybe something like that. And so Kaido's reading this in his, like, 30s, and he's like, oh, at the age of 19, he arrived, wait a second, King, how old am I? You're 34, sir. No! <laughs> like, it may be something like that. I don't know. Or maybe Kaido realized, like, he wasn't the one, and that just crushed his soul. And, you know, from that point onward, Kaido just became a drunk, and he's just, like, always had a bottle of sake by his side, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus some other meals as well he invented just so he can drink more sake. Could have been something like that, too, you know? So there's something else I want to mention here, and um, this doesn't necessarily tie back into the Kaido Joy Boy thing. I mean, it might. It happened in the last chapter, chapter 1036, during the flashback, okay? And uh, when I initially did that review, I did so with the unofficial translation, so I was waiting for the Viz version to come out to see if it was different, because this is actually very interesting, uh, because depending on how it was translated, and it was translated the same way. Okay, so in the last chapter, when King and Kaido were having that conversation, it seemed like in a man or something the conversation where you know Kaido's laughing and he's like oh King do you really think I can do it and King is just like oh, I should read it word verbatim right here it's just like legends are legends that is all all I seek from you now is that you can be the strongest there is and I won't lose any fight either I'll make you the king of the pirates okay that was like King's last thought before he was knocked out by Zoro's attack okay so here's the question during that flashback we don't know exactly how, you know, far back it was. We know it takes place after Kaido met King, at least a few years later. At this point, King is already wearing his BDSM gimp suit. Uh, he looks a little bit older than he did in the flashback when they were at Punk Hazard. At Punk Hazard, he looked kind of like a teenager. Here, he looks like in his early 20s, something like that. So a few years have gone by since then. But the question is, King used the phrase, King of the Pirates, okay? In the official, he used that phrase, King of the Pirates. Well... The interesting thing there is that that term did not come about properly, at least we believe that term did not come about properly, until Roger was executed. Okay, not even Roger was executed. When Roger found Laugh Tale, uh, he was executed 24 years ago. He found Laugh Tale 25 years ago. That was when the newspapers spread all over the world that Roger had done it, and they started calling him the King of the Pirates, okay? Which would mean... This flashback would have to have take place a uh, maximum of 25 years ago, except there's a couple of problems with that because Kaido still does not have his mustache. And we saw him having that mustache, I believe it was 23 years ago. Like, he definitely had it when he first met Odin, all right? And when Odin returned to Wano, which was around 25 years ago, Kaido, when he was in his dragon form, when he appeared over the flower capital, had that mustache. He also had the mustache when he fought Moria. See, I told you. I told you that mustache was going to be relevant. Y'all laughed at me. They all laughed at me, Barry. Well, who's laughing now? Mustaches. Mustaches are the key to the One Piece and the Void Century. <laughs> I need to grow a mustache. I'll grow the most fabulous mustache ever. I will grow the Moby mustache. Okay, so that's going to be my adventure for 2022, but no, more seriously right now, though, it either could just be a continuity error, like Oda just forgot to draw his mustache, let's not overthink that a little bit, but let's overthink that a little bit, or this scene, which is what I think, happened before Roger became King of the Pirates, okay? Meaning, that term, that phrase, King of the Pirates, might have you know, predated Roger. And you know what? At least predated Roger finding One Piece. And you know what? That actually makes sense. Because number one, it's not like a crazy phrase. It's not like, you know, this phrase was not invented until Roger found the One Piece, right? It's just calling someone the king of the pirates. 
You know, if you go into a bakery, wow, we're really overdoing the bakeries. Wow, you thought I talked about bakeries a lot in 2021. Oh, man, we're only five days into 2022. I've mentioned bakeries like four times in this one video, right? Well, like, if you go into a bakery and the baker could make, like, the best cinnamon buns you've ever had in your life, it's not a stretch to call that person the king of cinnamon buns, you know? <laughs> it's just like, or if someone's a really good race car driver, you'll be like, you're the king of NASCAR. Or if somebody's a really good basketball player, like, you're the king of basketball. Like, it's not insane, it's, like, not far off or esoteric to refer to someone as the king of something when they're really, really good at something, right? So, there were obviously pirates that existed before Roger, like Rox and Captain John and Wang Zhi! That was the first Wang Zhi of the year as well. And they were all really good pirates in their own right. So the fact that, like, somebody might have called Rox the king of the pirates, or you're going to be king of the pirates, you're going to be king of the pirates, it would make sense that the phrase existed before Roger found One Piece, because then there could have been an end goal. There could have been a thing that like, hey, did you hear the legend? Apparently somewhere out there in the new world, there's an island that nobody has ever found before. People don't even know if it's real. It doesn't have a name. It's not charted on any map, but the legend has it, that the Poneglyphs point to it. If you can decipher those strange glyphs. And once you reach that island, you will find a treasure unlike any you've ever discovered before and you will truly be known as the King of the Pirates. And then what did Roger do? Roger found the island. He named it Laugh Tale. He called the treasure One Piece. But the legend of the treasure itself, or the legend of that island, might have existed long before Roger found it. Roger's just the one that gave them the names, so the, the public at large knows what to call Tail Island. The public at large knows to call the treasure One Piece, all right? But the legend of it existed beforehand, and so that sort of set an angle, like, oh, whoever finds this place will truly and objectively receive the title King of the Pirates. So that might explain it. I like to think this flashback with King and Kaido in chapter 1036 takes place while Roger is, you know, still alive, and even before he found the One Piece itself. I like to think that the first flashback when Kaido and King broke out of Punk Hazard was maybe around 30 years ago, maybe 31, 32 years ago, something like that. This flashback takes place maybe three or four years after that. You know, maybe like 29, 28 years, something like that ago, okay? And then that gives at least a few more years for Kaido to grow that epic mustache, right? That's just my idea. That's just a theory. A One Piece theory. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're not going to end the video right there, but that is pretty much everything I had to say, so, you know, whatever. Anyway, yeah, um, just let me know what you think about this. Once again, I feel like I'm kind of late to the party on this one, because I feel like other people kind of came to this a realization. It was one of those things when I read the chapter at first, I didn't really notice maybe the idea, the connection that Kaido wanted to be Joy Boy, but then something happened, and now he's like the gatekeeper of a Joy Boy. But given the fact that we see what's going on with Luffy and him right now, I can definitely see that, all right? And so then we have some stuff with the names and the keen Taro legend, and then the King of the Pirates here, so who knows? We might find out more about that. Also, something else is that it was revealed as a little snippet in the magazine of Shonen Jump that in the beginning of 2022, when we get back to the chapter, and there's going to be another two-week break until the next chapter of One Piece, um, but the idea is that we are entering the climax of Wano. Now, whether that means there are going to be more acts, or Act 3 is just going to be the final act, I don't know. I would honestly like to think at this point that we get Kaido's backstory, and it doesn't have to be long. I mean, Big Mom's uh, backstory on Elbaf was only like two chapters. So we could get something like that, maybe two, three chapters of Kaido's backstory, and then we shift to Act 4. And Act 4 is not long. Act 4 is just the big climactic final battle. The fi it could be like five or six chapters, but it's five or six chapters of just Luffy fighting Kaido and nothing else. Maybe some, you know, we cut over to see some other characters once in a while, but it's mainly Kaido versus Luffy for five or six chapters or whatever. And then... Boom, Act 4 is over, and then Act 5 is like two chapters long. It's like the final banquet or whatever, and the Straw Hats have to leave, okay? Um, the structure of the Kabuki play, and a lot of people think it's just going to be three acts, and there are three-act Kabuki play structures, but I think a lot of people are forgetting, like, the end of Kabuki plays are very, very fast. That's the whole point. So don't think of it like, like, Act 3 is literally, like, 
longer than I think the Totland arc itself, okay? Like, it's very, very long, um, Act 3 just by itself, not even including the other two acts before it, right? But, you know, so maybe people think that, like, oh, Act 3 is so long, Act 4 and Act 5 also have to be long. No, the exact opposite, in fact. Act 4 is going to be very, very quick, and Act 5 only might be a chapter or two. Act 5 could literally just be the last chapter of Wano. Act 5 begin, Act 5 end, and that's it. And that would fall in line with the Kabuki structure, alright? Well, anyway, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. This will be Tekking and Barry and Akanabo signing out. Later, everyone.